Okay, so we are at the Prophet Samuel's tomb. So like most places here, like most places in the Holy Land, they are observed by three main religions. So that's the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims. So three religions acknowledge or recognize this place and also um, that is why we have the church, we have a church, we have a mosque, and we also have a synagogue there. Okay, so Prophet Samuel's tomb. <laughs> you ask me, how do you, how did they come to the conclusion that this is where the Prophet Samuel was, um, was buried? Okay, so this is the place where the Prophet Samuel used to judge the children, the Jewish people. Okay, so this is where he used to judge them. This is where he was found most of the time. So up there, that is actually where he it used to be done. But of course, this is not the original place. It was rebu rebuilt by the Crusaders. In the Bible, it is believed that the Prophet Samuel was buried in Ramah. And this is, Ramah was, used to be somewhere around here. So there's that, uh, it was also, it's called, it was called Mitzpeh Ramah, which is also a high place. The crib was usually built in the church so when an important person dies or passes away they would bury them in the in the church so it's like a, a flat place that is like a level place and then when the person is deceased they bury them there they they, they, they would be buried there so that is what we have at the bottom so that is where the prophet samuel was um was, was, was buried and also it was also an advantageous point for your opponents because it's at a high place and it was easy for you to see the enemy coming or the enemy approaching and you would be prepared so most of the time like when there was uh when there were wars and and the the, the city was conquered this is the place that most people would want to take they would take over the of the church where the prophet Samuel was buried so the prophet Samuel's tomb is at the bottom of this church it's in a crib um, so it is believed that the prophet Samuel was uh, judging the people the Jewish people from here he was also in case you don't know the prophet Samuel was the first leader of the Jewish people and he also anointed the Jewish people's first king and that was King Saul so the church here was built by the crusaders um, each time they conquered uh, a people they they built something that is very strong like a fortified city so this place has fortified walls that i will show you earlier i will show you later which were built by um, the crusaders or the crusaders I mentioned earlier the the tomb is actually at the bottom of the church so this was the original church so if we go this way voila we are now at the tomb I'm just going to go around and just show you the the, the, the excavation, the, the houses that were that were excavated, and also the fortified wall that I mentioned earlier that was built by the Crusaders. Okay, so we are still at the Prophet Samuel's tomb, the area where the Prophet Samuel's tomb. So right in front of me is an ancient well. This is an, an a very ancient well, and it's very very deep. So we are in the center. Um, this is where the almost everything happened here okay it was an old village where the Maccabi people lived and it was um, it's a central place like I said earlier it's a central place so it's 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 it, it is believed like for three things so one of the other things that I didn't mention earlier was this place is a very very dry place so they didn't have water so all the water that was here was being reused 
so as you can see a drainage kind of type of thing so this looks like it would obviously go to some kind of reservoir and the water would be reused walking down on the main street right in front here is a house that is believed or could be could have been the house of one of the of the leaders because of the way it is built and what it has it's it looks more luxurious um we have a well so remember i mentioned that this place is very dry there isn't a lot of water there was not a lot of water even then but we have a well right in front of the house and as we go in we find something that looks like a kitchen so they used to cook from outside so this is where the cooking was done you know and um so archaeologists found proof that the cooking was done here because they were able to find some charcoal from several years ago you know charcoal is organic and so it's busy to tr it's easy to trace where it's from okay so this is the house that well could have been the leader one of the leaders houses or one of the leaders house um so this looks like a refrigerator okay so the, it, it, it used to be covered and the entrance would be here so if you need to store something there that's what you would put it there so now let me just tell you one other thing about this place although i think i mentioned it earlier so it's at a very high altitude a very high level but imagine you would still have to put like have like something like a refrigerator okay so like i mentioned earlier this looks like um a good area so they also had a well like down there that's a well and this looks like something like a bath and we have you see so there's somewhere to sit there and you can have your bath there and we also have something looks that looks like a drainage system again drainage system so the water would be collected it could be reused for different things like laundry or feeding the animal or watering fields or something like that so Okay, let's uh, keep going. So, this place had like two other, two advantage. It's like it's an advantage point, like because of its height, because it's the highest point for security. So it's on a high place. So that is an advantage. And also it was in the center. So if people like traders were coming from the, from Yafo, from Jaffa, and they're traveling to the other parts of the, of the, of the country, they would pass through here, pass through to wherever they're trying to go to get to where they want to go okay so um the other so also on, on the security point of view it is very 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 advantageous if you are at a spot where you're able to spot your enemies so it's at the top and you would be able to spot the the enemies approaching and then on the trading side the soldiers would be easy it is easy for the soldiers to collect taxes and we have an old wine press so apparently in the hall at the far end there on my right it should be on your left i'm not sure they actually found grape seeds so this was a, a, a wine press the winery so they used to make wine from here and if you could see from the ground there are some holes that have been dug so that was so the barrel does not tip over and spill the wine so ancient ancient wine <laughs> ancient wine press this is the fortified wall that the crusaders built so how did it come about so they were traveling to jerusalem and they were climbing up the mountain and when they came up to the top they were able to see um jerusalem so i believe it's the joy that they felt when they were able to see jerusalem their destination and they called it mount gaudi in english it's the mount of joy because they were able to see jerusalem they were able to see their destination and they built this um this war this wall is a very, very strong wall, fortified wall. It was very difficult to get through it. And then on top, they also built a church. They built a church and that is where the tomb of the prophet Samuel is. So on the wall, we can actually see some signs or some, some chipping signs that were actually curved into the walls. Um, 
around the 1099 <laughs> around 1099 so okay so we're just coming from seeing the villages where the Maccabi people lived well, and that's about 2200 right? that years ago and now we are going to around 1999 or 1900 and that's the crusader times so so I just learned something so the chippings in the wars were a way for them to tell who built it or who worked on this particular site in order for them to be paid so there are different types so like this one is pointing down and it's like a triangle it's like a triangle and I think we saw another one um, it's with a different shape here this one has a different shape as you can see so this is how they would know who worked here and who will have to get paid for that work so even here this is a different one it's a different sign this is amazing this is a nice systematic way of doing things place there at the bottom is it used to be like an oil phrase so they would use it to make olive oil and um the interesting but most interesting part about this place are these lamp holders. The lamp holders are believed to be about a hundred years old. Maybe you can make less. It's difficult to tell how long the iron is, but they could tell because of the way that they were built, the way that they were made. They were put together using nails. So that's how you know that it's actually an old, old, old place. So this place was built after a war and everything, everything was, that was used to make is the remains. So they tried to utilize everything that they could, uh, that they could use from the war, from the remains of the war. And I, if you can see this, this kind of like an arc thingy, it actually used to be part of this place, which I believe was, um, was broken. Uh, maybe during the war it was broken and then um, they, they were not able to find anything here because it is believed that probably whatever remains that were there were used to rebuild this place. Wow, amazing. Um, so at the entrance here at the top, we see the, the David's, the King David's star and the tomb. So the tomb is usually uh, a symbol or it is associated with Islam. So up here in the wall, we have an original Crusaders water pipe. Okay, so looking at the pesting around here, this looks like it could have been the water, like water reservoir, like somewhere to keep water. So um, just now I showed you an original pipe from the Crusaders time and it's coming to here. So this is where the water could have been stored. Remember before I mentioned that the place didn't have much water and whatnot. So um, this could have been the reservoirs for the water. And we have oil, olive oil price work. Say we're not it's all dusty. It's okay. Okay, so it looks like we found <laughs> so it looks like this used to be an old olive oil press. So this is a crusader's neighborhood and so the water was coming from the rooftop. So obviously if the water is coming from the roof, it's probably not so clean. It's probably not very clean. So those four holes there, they had filters that were used to filter the water and then the water would come down, go down there into the reservoir and the water would be clean and good to use. So we have here an ancient oven that was used a very long time ago. So if you can see, it has about two areas. So it has the main center area. That's where they would put the fire. And then around it, um, that's where you put the whatever you want to bake or whatever you want to put there. You could put a whole sheep or whatever. And it was used by the whole village. Like everyone that lived here would use it. Uh, 
to to put stuff there and they then they would eat so now the other thing that i i think i mentioned earlier is that this place was very cold it's a very cold area because it's at a top it's at the top 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 of the mountain so it was also used for heating so if you can see on top it used to have there was a dome obviously that would contain the heat and then um on the left there we have like wood um so they they, they had like some kind of channel that would um channel the the heat into some rooms around it and then it would warm up the walls and it would keep the people warm in the very very cold season so apparently the I've just been informed that apparently this tradition of cooking, like having one central place where you can take your meat and whatnot to cook and then you can share with everybody. Apparently it happens, it's still happening now, especially even around Eid. Um, there's a place that not so far here, there's a village not so far from Okay, so now we're entering the Crusaders Church again. Um, just uh, a few things that I would like to add. Um, so initially this was in the shape of a cross so it would come in from there and then meet here and then go left and right um, but when the Muslims came they uh, to turn it into a mosque they built a wall and as you can see if we go closer you will see that one of the stones has some Hebrew inscribed in it it has some hebrew writings in it and just below it we have some um, arabic writings inscribed in the wall so um so this just takes us back to what i said earlier when i, I said that when the when after the war they used everything that they could find here to rebuild what they could rebuild so now we have a mosque as you can see we have Now we have a mosque that, and we have this area that is pointing to Mecca, of course. Um, and as if you go this way, if you go that way, you go to the Prophet Samuel's tomb. Okay. So it has been an interesting morning, interesting afternoon, mid afternoon, mid morning. Um, just leaving. The tomb of the prophet samuel so this has been your girl sophie c aka your virtual tour guide signing out from the prophet samuel's tomb later